Hello, sophomores. It's that time again. Another lesson of notes. This lesson is actually kind of short with the notes. So uh, this would be unit two, lesson three notes. The last thing, what we've, been, what we've been learning about in this whole unit, by the way, is now that the new world has been discovered, remember, England, because John Cabot, Giovanni Caboto, he claimed land in the New World for the country of England. So now we were learning about how England started to establish colonies over in the New World. And we learned about Jamestown being a business venture. We learned about how the pilgrims came over for religious reasons. And we're going to, in Lesson 3, talk a little bit more about the New England colonies as they all started to grow. Uh, the very last thing in your notes was uh, Squanto. The Indian who befriended and helped the pilgrims. You guys did a reading assignment about poor Squanto. Very interesting character and uh, who lived a very sad life. Uh, I've always thought that one of the most coolest people to meet in history, if I could go meet someone from history, I would want to go talk to Squanto, the Indian. Don't know why. I just think it would be really neat to talk to him. Now today, I have to activate your brain with a real short story. The witches are after me. I got a picture of an old man here in a trench coat. Looks like he's been uh, sipping a little bit too much champagne. The witches are after me. I know what you're saying. What in the world? Well, a long time ago, when I was probably in my 20s, my wife and I decided that we were going to go visit a friend of mine over in, in Washington, D.C. His name was Sean, and he lived out in Washington, D.C., so my wife and I took off uh, just, just small redneck country pumpkins, country people from Fayette County, West Virginia. And we were going to the big city in the bright lights of Washington, D.C. Hadn't been there before. So, <laughs> I mean, it was an experience. I mean, we met, we drove out to Virginia and we met Sean, my friend that I used to know when I lived in Virginia a long time ago as a kid. Um, and he had moved to D.C. But anyway, we met him there, and, and he took us around sightseeing the, the city of Washington, D.C. We went to all the really cool places like the Smithsonian. We rode the, the subway system in D.C., which was an experience uh, for, for being around small town West Virginia. Uh, we went out to the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, we went to a really cool park, that uh, roadside park that was at the end of the runway for Dulles International Airport. And these big, huge airplanes would fly right over your head. And you could just lay there in the grass and watch them. That was pretty cool. But one of the things I remember the most was an encounter with a homeless man while we were on the streets of Washington, D.C. Now, he looked very similar to this man, an older gentleman dressed in a trench coat. But my wife and Sean and I were walking down the street amidst a throng of people in a city, you know. And I'm used to Beckley being the big, Beckley's the big city in the bright lights around here, but uh, Washington, D.C., much more populated area. People were everywhere. And this old man in a trench coat came walking up to me and Sean. And at first I was taken back a little bit, like, okay, what's this guy want? And he asked us for some money. And Sean, of course, looked at him and says, I, I don't have no money. I looked at the man and said, look, I don't have any cash. I'm so sorry. And the guy, instead of arguing with us or instead of just thanking us and walking away, his eyes suddenly went real wide like this. And he looked over his shoulder. And he looked over this shoulder. And he went, the witches are after me. And he took off running. <laughs> and Sean and I just stood there and looked at each other like, what in the world just happened? I, I guess the guy was suffering from some sort of paranoia, uh, some sort of delusion or any way, but uh, he ran off thinking that witches were chasing him. And Sean and I and my wife, we kind of just watched him run through the crowd and never saw him again. I often wondered whatever happened to that guy and if I could have... Maybe should have done more to help him, but I'm not sure if I could have. The witches are after me. Now, we're going to learn a little bit about a paranoia that happened in the Puritan colonies called the Salem Witch Trials here in a minute, and we'll learn more about it in this unit. 
But get out your notebook. It's time to take just a very, uh, very few notes, I guess I would say, in this lesson. Remember to pause this video at any time so that you can copy these notes down. Now, this is an important question right here. We're going to talk about a time in colonialization, colonial settlement, known as the Great Migration. Why did the Great Migration occur? Well, there are three reasons listed here. You can cop, uh, pause this screen and, and copy them down, and I will talk about them. All right, let's talk about them a moment. Now, let's just think. For one thing, the Great Migration, people who migrate are immigrants, people who are moving. It's a, the Great Moving, I guess, would what you would call it. And some of you guys that are in my class maybe have moved before in your life. And you know what it's like to move. You go to a new school. You know, that's no fun. People don't know who you are. You want to slink and hide, but yet... Then there's teachers like me who always like probably point you out and say, you know, hey, we're glad to have a new student here today. And you probably just want to just crawl away and hide somewhere. But you've moved. Some of you have moved and you know what it's like to be in a new place. In a new school. And sometimes it's not very fun. But the Great Migration happened in the colonial times. And it, it, it was, as the name said when a lot of people moved England, moved from England and left England and moved to the new world. They weren't moving to a new school, or new, but they were moving to a new place. And you have to understand as Jamestown took hold and tobacco saved that colony, that colony grew into the colony of Virginia. As the pilgrims who left England to escape persecution and to follow their religion freely, they left, moved to the new world in what is now Massachusetts, the state of Massachusetts, but the Pilgrim colony kind of took cold. More and more pilgrims came over there, more Puritans, uh, people who wanted to purify the Church of England and <coughs> would uh, actually suffer consequences for that because the king was in charge of the Church of England. So if you said anything against the Church of England, it would be almost like saying something against the king himself. So many more people moved over to the colony of Massachusetts where the Puritans were. And as more and more people moved there, the colonies began to grow. Now there were three reasons why this great movement happened, and you just wrote it down in your notes. Talk about them briefly. There were people moved for economic reasons, political reasons, and religious reasons. Now, you've already learned in this unit about the indentured servants, people who were down on their luck, maybe had no job, had no way of making money. They signed up for the indentured servant program in exchange for their boat ticket to the new world. They uh, had to work their debt off. Full usually took them four to seven years or so. And then after that, they gained 20 acres of land and worked off their debt and were free to go. So... You can understand why many people came to the New World through the indentured servant program because of their economic problems. Other people moved to the New World on the headright system where if you bought your ticket, you got 50 acres of free land and a whole fresh start, a new start. And that was very appealing to a lot of people. So we have economic reasons why many people moved. Another reason people moved was political problems, political reasons. Uh, like I said before, um, if you were outspoken against the Church of England, the Anglican Church, uh, you were going to have some political problems because the king wasn't going to like it. So people left England and moved to the New World to escape these political problems and political disagreements that they may have had with the Church of England. And that also ties in with the third reason, and that was religious problems. Uh, people wanted to practice their religion freely. They wanted to practice their religion the way they believed. And if they disagreed with how the Church of England was doing things, they wanted to be able to move to a fresh place, the new world, and to have a fresh start and practice their religion the way they wanted to. So those were the three reasons why this Great Migration occurred. Economic problems, political problems, and religious problems. 
So you got that one. That's the only essential question for us this time. Now we only have three vocabulary words. Tying in with the political and religious problems is our first vocabulary word. It's called dissenters. These were people who disagreed with the official opinion, and that was the official opinion of the Church of England, which was also the official opinion of the king. Dissenters, people who fell into these problem categories right here who decided they wanted to get out and get away and move to the new world and have a fresh start. The next term is the Great Migration itself, this big movement that happened. This was a time period when thousands and thousands of people left England and moved to the New World. The colonies in the New World, the English colonies in the New World kept growing and growing in the numbers of people. Now I always have a little presentation to remember the Great Migration. I, I, I'm going to do it like in a Spongebob style. The Great Migration. The time period when thousands and thousands of people left England and moved to the New World. The Great Migration. The time period when thousands and thousands of people left England and moved to the New World. That's how I always remember the Great Migration. <laughs> All right. The last term makes me think of that homeless man I saw on D.C. The witches are after me. He was paranoid and delusional. But the Salem witch trials, this is a time period where a paranoia swept through the Puritan colonies about witchcraft. You can pause this and write it down. Let's talk just a moment. Uh, the Pilgrim colonies in Massachusetts, they, they kept growing into the Massachusetts colony, which was also known as the Puritan colony, because the makeup of the colony were a lot of Puritans and pilgrims who left England because of religious problems and moved over to the New World for their, to practice their religion freely. Um, the Salem witch trials we've all heard of before, but uh, and you're going to explore the Salem witch trials in an assignment here in this folder where you get to investigate and, and uh, research the Salem witch trials a little bit. But the Salem witch trials started with teenagers, these teenage girls who were in trouble. <laughs> ah, yes, they got in trouble. They were probably sneaking out or doing something they shouldn't have done. And you got to remember the Puritan colony was very strict, religious, moral, I mean, you know, there wasn't any leeway because their whole colony was based on their religion and the Bible. And uh, when these young girls were in trouble, they did what any young teenager does when you get in trouble. That's right. They lied. They lied. <laughs> Is that what you guys do? You try to lie your way out of it? I think that's what I did when I was a teenager. It never worked. I always got caught in the lie. And I told one lie, and then it would lead to another lie, and it would lead to a worse lie, and then I'd get caught in all of it. it was, I was busted. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. For those of you who ever try to lie your way out of trouble, I don't know. Caleb Gray, do you ever lie to get your way out of trouble? Well, that's what these teenagers did in the Puritan colony, and they made up some bizarre story about a lady in the community that they didn't like very well and they basically accused them of casting spells on them to make them act that way so uh i mean i can see it now i can see uh i can see uh ducati getting in trouble in class and he could be like coach it's not me it's not me really mrs ellison just cast a spell on me man made me act that way <laughs> Well, we know how silly that, that all sounds in today, in today for us. But uh, the Puritans took witchcraft uh, very seriously. And uh, as this paranoia just grew and spread, they, they were accusing people of being witches. People were getting accused of this. We all know it's not true. You know, I love Harry Potter like the rest of you guys, but I mean... It's fictional and make believe. You, it's not real. I mean, there weren't real witches in the Puritan colonies, but 
This paranoia made him think so. All in all, I think there were 19 people executed for being witches. And they, it, it was really bizarre how this whole thing happened. They would accuse a person of being a witch and then they would try to make them confess and, and they would put them through these weird tests like uh, if you put their hand in a boiling water and it burned and they were innocent. If it didn't burn and they were a witch and they were going to be executed. Well, I mean, think about that. Or tie a rock around them, throw them in the lake or a river, and if they floated, then they were a witch and they were going to be executed. But if they drowned, they were innocent. <laughs> I mean, that makes no sense. Uh, but anyway, this paranoia swept through the Puritan culture. And in many ways, it showed the hypocrisy, I think, of the Puritans of the time and their piousness as they tried to blame people for being witches and execute them, even though we all know, even though we all know murder is wrong, but they really believed in their heart they were doing the right thing. Uh, you're gonna have an assignment in this folder where you're going to research the Salem witch trials and you're gonna come up with, uh, you're gonna write down 10 fun facts that you learned about the Salem witch trials. So look for some things about a man being crushed with rocks. Ooh. Look for how a dog was involved and a cake made of urine. Ugh. So you're gonna be looking for those things to write down in your assignment about the Salem witch trials. Uh, there's also going to be a little quiz about the Great Migration. It's real short. I think it's only like five questions. It'll be in this folder too. So do those two couple things. Keep track of your deadlines and due dates. And I'll see you back in school, hopefully very soon. Coach E, signing out.